Assalamu alaikum dear students. I am Dr. Shah Jabeen and today's lecture topic is Humoral Immunity. These are the objectives of this lecture. We will discuss the specific attributes of B lymphocytes and at the end of the lecture you would be able to explain the development processing and the roles of uh, B lymphocyte clones and their memory cells. And you would also be able to discuss the structure of antigen, antibody and their types. As we have discussed in the previous lecture that humoral immunity is attributed by the B lymphocytes which secrete antibodies into the blood in order to combat extracellular bacterial pathogens and viruses. But all of this mechanism is antigen specific that it is initiated by antigen. Now what is antigen? Antigens are the substances that can evoke an immune response in the body and mostly they are proteins and polysaccharides they, and their antigenicity depends upon the regular recurrent molecular groups on their surface known as epitopes or determinant sites. For a substance to be antigenic, they must have a high molecular weight more than 8000. If the weight is smaller than the 8000, that substance cannot induce an immune response and it is known as heptin. Now come to the development and processing of B lymphocyte. They are derived in the embryo from pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells and they are pre-processed in the liver during the mid-fetal life and in late fetal life and after birth they are pre-processed in bone marrow. They are known as B lymphocytes just because they were first discovered in the birth of, of fabricas of birds. After pre-processing in the bone marrow, the matured B lymphocytes come out of the bone marrow and enter into the circulation and then they recirculate between blood and the lymphoid organs like lymph nodes and spleen in search of the antigen to be activated. Millions of different types of preformed, matured, pre-processed B lymphocytes formed are capable of secreting highly specific around 100,000 types of antibodies because during pre-processing in bone marrow the gene segments mix with each other in random combinations. Once the specific B lymphocyte is activated by its antigen like this it reproduces wildly, forming tremendous number of duplicates known as clone of B cells. Macrophages in the lymphoid tissue phagocyte the antigen and present it to the B lymphocyte. Helper T cells, a type of T lymphocyte, also contribute in activating B lymphocyte The B lymphocyte is specific for the antigen, enlarge and differentiate into plasma blast with the proliferative rough endoplasmic reticulum and they are converted into plasma cells. The plasma cells secrete gamma globulins known as antibodies at a higher or rapid rate. A moderate number of B lymphocytes similar to those of the original clone are also formed and these are known as memory cells but they remain dormant and circulate throughout the lymphoid organs until they are activated by the exposure of same antigen and they generate much more potent and rapid response. So when the B lymphocyte is stimulated or activated by an antigen it secretes antibody 
and this antibody response is of two types primary humoral response and secondary humoral response primary response refers to the uh, response of the body when uh, when the antigen is introduced into the body for the first time while the secondary response is when when the same antigen is introduced in the body for the second time and there is a difference between the primary and the secondary response primary response is weak and short lived while the secondary response is long lived and more enhanced and potent this slide shows the comparison between primary and secondary response of b lymphocyte activated by the same antigen a so this is the primary response in circled one you can see this is weak less potent and requires latent period while now then circled one is the secondary response evoked by the same antigen a it is amplified rapid without or less latent period this is all due to the memory cells they retain prior antigenicity and produced enhanced response on exposure of same antigen for the second time now the green in circle this graph showing another primary response but evoked by an other antigen you can say the antigen b and you can see this is also weak one now what are antibodies that are secreted by the b cells on an any antigenic stimulation they are immunoglobulins or gamma globulins which uh, are designated as ig and they react specifically with the antigens which stimulated their production they make up around 20% of the protein in blood plasma this is the structure of a typical antibody seems to be complicated but it is not all of the immunoglobulins are composed of four polypeptide chains two identical chains light chains the smaller one and the two identical heavy chains forming a y shape the longer one each light chain is connected to a heavy chain by a disulfide bond and two heavy chains are connected by two disulfide bonds now this slide shows two portions of an antibody upper ends now the encircled one of both the heavy and light chains are called variable region or variable portion as the name says this variable portion varies and involved in antigen recognition and it is different for each specific antibody antibodies bind to the antigens through this variable region of light and heavy chain so the antigen antibody interaction occurs at this variable region now see the larger remaining portion and that is known as constant region or constant portion this constant region is same as the name says and it is required for structural integrity and effective functions and it carries out different biological functions like complement activation binding to the cell surface receptors or the placental transfer now this slide shows the unique structural architecture of the antibodies that allow multiple highly diverse antigens to induce identical effector functions you can see the variable portions that is the variable region where the antigen is attached and they are the antigens are different in shape they are different antigens and they are adhered to the variable region by a lock key mechanism like this but there is a constant portion that will evoke identical response that is the immunity though the regions are uh, the immunity that is uh, evoked by the different types of antigens but the different types of antigens are attached towards the variable region 
and the biological functions are the same that are carried by the constant region that is the immunity now this slide is for your revision tell me quickly the smaller one is these are light chains while the longer one y shaped are heavy chains and what is the encircled region this is the antigen binding site that is the variable region and the remaining portion or the region is known as constant region as i have told you that antigen has a specific portion that is known as epitope and that is responsible for its antigenicity and this is the part that makes contact with the antibody like this and to where yes the antigen or the epitope connects to the antibody at variable region now if an antibody is treated with proteolytic enzyme pepain peptide bonds are broken producing two identical fab fragments and one fc fragment and these fragments are nothing but the portions or the regions you have done it the blue one the fab region or the fab fragment is the variable region and you know it very well that it is uh, specific for the antigen while the constant the yellow one is the fc portion of or you can say the fc fragment and it carries out the biological all the biological activities and it is the constant portion of the antibody now come to the last objective of our lecture that is the types of antibody antibody or immunoglobulins have been divided into five distinct classes known as the isotypes they are igg iga igm e and d game d now the immunoglobulin g it is monomeric um, the structure we have studied before as a typical antibody structure was monomeric that is one unit and it provide two variable portion or two free sites for antigen binding sites that is why it is known as two variable portion divalent this is the most abundant immunoglobulin or antibody in the body in the in the adults as well as in the newborn and 75% of our total body immunoglobulin is igg it is prominent in serum and it is the antibody that can cross the placenta in order to protect a fetus but uh, you will know in the blood grouping that rh antibody is a igg type at it can cross the placenta and it is the major form of immunoglobulin that is produced during secondary response you know the primary and secondary response the igg is the immunoglobulins of secondary response and it constitute an important defense against bacteria and viruses by fixing uh, as it has receptors for monocytes macrophages platelets natural killer cells non specific lymphocytes and it is also important for the activation of complement system now the igm it is pentameric or decavalent that it provides 10 um, spaces for the antigen binding and all this it is a very large structure that is held together by a j chain and it constitute only about 10% of the total serum iggs but it is the first antibody that is pro produced in response to infection that would be the primary response it cannot cross placenta but the presence of igm in infant or fetus indicate infection it is the most efficient immunoglobulin in fixation complement fixation or antibody reactions and it is very important against the bacteria and viruses now this is the structure of pentameric igm antibody 
having 10 binding sites for the antigen and the, the, this is a large structure of the immunoglobulin uh, bound by J chain. The example of IgM are antibody A and B of blood group AB. Now the immunoglobulin A. Immunoglobulin A is the second most abundant and it is present in the serum and the secretions and sometimes it is also known as the secretory immunoglobulin in the serum it is known as the uh, is it is around 15 percent and it has the monomeric structure while the in the secretions it is dimeric in structure and uh, it is present in all the secretion as colostrum saliva tears respiratory intestinal and genital tract secretions where it prevents the attachment of microorganisms to the mucous membrane. It is also found in breast milk and supplies passive immunity to the baby. Now here you can see the monomeric structure just like the IgG that is the non-secretory present in the serum. This is also IgA and uh, this is the secretory structure that is connected the two monomeric that is uh, two units are connected with the J chain and it confers this structure confers solubility in secretion that is why it is the uh, immunoglobulin that is present in the secretion IgA. Now the IgE immunoglobulin it is present in very low amount in the serum except uh, in the persons having type 1 hypersensitivity or you can say the allergy as it has receptors for the mast cell and basophils and in the persons with parasitic infection. This slide shows that IgE is concerned with the allergy or it mediates type 1 hypersensitivity. You know look at here that the FC portion or the constant portion of the IgE has receptor for the mast cell and when, he, when any of the allergen or antigen attaches to the variable portions the mast cells degranulate and release histamine and other allergic mediated substances causing atopy or type 1 hypersensitivity. Now the last immunoglobulin, the IgD, it is also known as a defective antibody. It is present in a very small amount in the serum and it has no known function uh, except it is present on the surface of many B lymphocytes. In the end, this slide is very important that describes the class switching or changing of one isotype of the immunoglobulin to the another type. Uh, this is a biological mechanism that changes a B cell's production from one type of immunoglobulin to the another type. Just like uh, an antigen can produce IgM in the primary response and in the secondary response, it is switches towards the IgG. During this process, the constant region or the portion of the antibody is changed but the variable portion uh, remains the same. So there is no effect over the antigen specificity and the antibody retains affinity for the same antigen but it can interact with the different effector molecules. This slide shows the summary of all the major functions of all the immunoglobulins. Thank you students. This is my email address for any query and the book's name for reference.